Good afternoon. Uh, very happy to be here. Uh, this is actually the first day of my second month uh, in Tele2. Um, I'm in charge for the network and also for the IT. And uh, before I joined uh, Tele2, I was in India. I was a group CTO for Bharti Airtel and could experience for two and a half years uh, the crazy market in India, which is mainly 2G focused in the last half year. Uh, 3G was introduced, and uh, you wouldn't believe the growth rates you see there and the little spectrum you have. And I will come back during my presentation and comparing that. Before that, I was also for many, many years uh, in Deutsche Telekom. I was in my last position, the group CTO for T-Mobile Worldwide. But uh, then people asked me, uh, why are you going from India, you know, from Germany to India, and then to Sweden? Um, I have to say, uh, Tele2, for me, is clearly a role model in the challenger domain, and I haven't been there. And uh, as the theme of the day, it combines the best of both worlds, namely the uh, fast-growing emerging markets and the mature uh, markets like here in Sweden. And all technologies are there. And this is uh, very exciting for somebody uh, like me. And I have to say, I was uh, very, always very fond of the idea of always delivering the best deal, which for me means focus on what's relevant for the customer, drive the cost down, but don't compromise on quality. And I personally believe that is the future for operators. Uh, don't, you know, make the fancy stuff and drive your customers crazy. Last but not least, it's a great team, and we have really fun. Uh, also, it's high performance and uh, sometimes also challenging. So, um, so I'm happy to be here, and I hope you are ready for some uh, technology. I want to start... Uh, <laughs> yes, oh, good. I want to start with showing where we are. And you, we have heard 11 countries, um, 32 million customers. And as you can see here, the infrastructure which, which has been built in the, in the past years is very diverse. Country by country, we have a little bit different uh, uh, conditions, while in Sweden, we have all. In Russia, we have 2G only. And uh, this is where we are starting uh, from. But it's a substantial network. And uh, if you look here also on the fixed side, and we had that, this, this, that question before on the fixed, for me, fixed uh, is important for the future because, first of all, it's an opportunity to leverage synergies because it was built as a separate network. Now we can integrate it and leverage the synergies to get the cost down. But going forward, we can leverage the synergies in order to address you know, more, more business models because wherever we build LTE, we will have to have high bandwidth uh, backhaul. High bandwidth backhaul you can also use in order to connect SME or even uh, residential customers. So there is an opportunity in, in what we are doing, and it's very uh, important. And you see the transmission investment, transmission equipment, fiber, and routers uh, compared to the, to the last years has significantly increased and is a focus in all countries. We need it in all countries. Coming from India, as I said before, where operators had between 4.6 to 10 megahertz. Actually, the regulator believed whatever is above 6.2 megahertz is excessive, uh, and, and in 3G, 5 megahertz. Looking to the tele frequency portfolio, that is very encouraging. It's an extremely well-set platform for the future. This is true for all countries. And uh, we try to picture here what we have done with the spectrum in terms of different technologies being implemented, but also where we have already a technology neutrality. This is very important when building networks in a very efficient manner. And if you look to Sweden, 20 everywhere in 2640 megahertz, that is a great basis for the future. Here we clearly leverage our two joint ventures we have, which give us a great possibility to start. And we're using it, for example, for LTE. We built LTE not only in 2600, we also built LTE 900. And this gives us a great coverage. And as we build LTE 900, we refresh our GSM because it's one base station. It's just software. This is very economic. And at the end of the rollout, somewhere end of next year, we will have a GSM coverage, which is equal to an LTE coverage a refreshed hardware and great service for our customers. At the same point in time, we have a great coverage already today in 3G. All countries are well positioned. If you look to Russia, yes, it is a 2G country today only. I will come back to that. But the amount of spectrum there leaves all options open 
for the future as soon as techno neutrality comes and the possibility to reform spectrum uh, within the bands we have. Now looking to what's going on in technology, we have the 2G, 3G, 4G, and everybody at the moment is so focused on 4G, what's going on, that you somehow forget where we are still earning most of the money, namely 2G. And uh, you see that in this technology chart, 2G, and this is focused on data evolution, 2G, 3G, and 4G, all of them have a good evolution going forward. There's still upgrade in technology there. We are still getting better speeds, better user experience, and for us, as we play in all these markets, it opens all opportunities and we can choose and pick whatever is good for us in terms of cost reduction or uh, competitiveness and uh, user experience. I want to rest a little bit on the 2G. If you see in Sweden here, 2G data still grows tremendously. And this is my experience also from other countries. Wherever you introduce 3G, the smartphones come to play, all of a sudden there's a pull-through effect on the 2G side. And 2G today is not necessarily the bad quit block in terms of uh, quality of service. That used to be in the GPS times. That was horrible. You come out of 3G and it drop to GPS, it's like nothing works anymore. Today, and I experienced that in India for the last two and a half years, most of the people are on, on 2G Edge and using iPhones and Android phones and so on. It's a reasonable uh, kind of experience. And this is the reason why still GSM, it is the most mature standard, and it's not the standard of the future, but it will be there for quite a while. We see traffic increasing and traffic and data overtaking voice pretty soon. And this is something we as operators need to be prepared for. And there's also machine-to-machine -machine communication because of the low speed they need. GSM, because of this great coverage GSM uh, delivers, is an ideal platform to serve machine-to-machine uh, uh, -machine communication and these type of customers. And as I said already, Edge today is a reasonable standard. It's comparable to the first 3G uh, ex user experience. Latency has been driven down, user bitrate has been driven up, which led to web download times now in the range of what you has been, have been used uh, to from 3G. And there's still a potential going forward. There's a standard evolution, which is called edge evolution. Some of it is only software, and that is a, it's a cheap opportunity to still leverage on the investments we have made. And this gives us investment protection, and it gives us all options to wait until the time is right to step up to next uh, of the technologies. But looking to data consumption overall, and this is now volumetric, you see the growth is still there. It's, it's accelerating, not really, it's kind of linear. It depends on the season, but we see a steep growth here, and this is mainly driven by 3G, obviously. 3G is the main driver today. And this certainly gives you a challenge, in particular as smartphones come in, which really create a lot of signaling load these days. So we need to be able to upgrade our networks, although the revenues might not develop accordingly. So we need to be able to do that uh, and, and at the same point in time keep the cost in check or even further reduce our cost per user of cost per bit per second. Fortunately, the industry is helping us and all suppliers have roadmaps in 3G which are which, which shows us a very safe standard to be in today. And this is an example of uh, NSN here, but you will find the same from Ericsson, Huawei, uh, whoever is, is there. Uh, and it's, there are different means in order to improve the speed. One is just better technology, you know, higher coding rates from QPSK to, you know, whatever, 16QAM, uh, 64QAM, 128QAM. That's a coding rate. The other is, Use MIMO. This means more antennas, more amplifiers. That's already a little bit more investment. And the third is bundled channels. Take one carrier, 5 megahertz. Take another one, 10. All of a sudden, you can double the throughput. You can double the peak speed uh, to offer your, to your customers. And by that, you can cope with the requirements you have. 